Welcome to the Nerdy Nomicon Tag It Tuesday. Hi. Um, everybody really seemed, well, it was like split. I didn't realize that it was going to be that big of a divide with Suicide Squad last week. But uh, we can take it just as well as we can give it. So this week we're reading one star reviews of movies that we love. Let's do this. Yay! Theme song. <laughs> All right, so you ready to get into this? No, this sounds horrifying. Yeah. Uh, this is a tag, again, you brought to the table, mm -hmm. um, called... One Star Reviews of Awesome Movies. That's just what we'll call it. Fair enough, that's what we're gonna call it. Um, I technically saw a few people do this. Uh, person I remember the most was Paperback Dreams. I feel like a few other people did it, but I'll just go with Paperback Dreams, so. All right, mm -hmm. and we're, once again, we're stealing them from BookTube, we're bringing them over to FilmTube. So let's get into this. The first movie is one of your picks. One of your favorite movies of all time, Shaun of the Dead. Oh, it's my favorite movie of all time. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Okay. Not everybody agrees with you. Oh. I've got a one star review here called Overrated Amateurish Movie. This looks like a sixth grade class produced it. I kept watching it, hoping it would get better. Never did. One star. I'd like to see your movie reviewer. You suck. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's not so bad. I mean, I don't agree with them. Uh, how you would think that was amateurish is beyond me. But, you know, whatever. It's all good. This other review, one star, entitled Awful. It is probably one of the worst movies that I have ever seen. Will do anything to remove it from my memory. But you don't deserve it, so let's find you an uh, eternal sunshine of the spotless mind machine and wipe it from your memory because you don't deserve it. Yeah, uh, that, you don't that was a it. bit harsh, no? You suck. Another one star review for this entitled One Word Horrible. That's three words. There is no review, that was just the title. There is no review for that. Well, screw you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even bother to write a review. One word, horrible, that's three words, and there's no review. There, there, there was no review there. It was just the title. What I guess that was just what he wanted to put in there. Sure. If I, if I were him, I at least would have written horrible in the review there. He, he did not. What a dick. So that was Shaun of the Dead, Brooke's favorite movie of all time, and your second favorite movie. Dogma. Kevin Smith opus about two renegade angels trying to re-enter heaven, thus negating all of existence. All-star cast in this movie. I really like it. It's one of my favorite movies of all time as well. It's um, really good. This movie actually helped to reaffirm my views on religion. I just think it's funny. I have no reviews on... I have no feelings on anything. But not everybody agrees with us. Those people are dumb! You, the one thing that Robbie did say when he was going through reviews is everyone likes to write like dissertations in their reviews on this. Yes, one. so it this took me probably about two hours to find relatively short reviews, and one of the ones in here I'm only gonna read pieces of because it is basically a thesis. Like I'm relatively sure somebody turned this in to get their doctorate, as far as a film review. Well, good for them. This review is entitled "A Very Evil Film." I wish I could have given this very evil film zero stars. Mock God at your own risk. Hell is a real place. It was mocking evil. It was mocking people who take religion too seriously. I definitely don't think it was, if you took mocking God from this, you were, I know exactly who you are. You're the kind of person who watched Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas and gave it five stars. We're not friends. This review is called A Bad Joke. What a worthless, childish, pretentious movie. It, wait a minute, pretentious? I mean, Out of any of the adjectives I would use to describe this movie, pretentious would not be one of them. I need a beer. <laughs> it's supposed to be a satire on Catholicism, but is such an inane film that I almost felt pity for it. So this is what a hip, clever, witty movie should be nowadays, eh? Well, this movie well, came yes, out in the actually. 1990s, so 1999. I, don't know, I don't know how hip it is, but sure, yeah. And for the record, that review was written in 2004. Intelligent Ooh. to some, I guess, but dogma limps. I'm not joking. These are dissertations. Why is that so? This is only this much of it. There, there were three screenshots. I like all the like this. quotation marks. Yes. Like quotation marks. There's a lot of quotation marks. So I'm only gonna read bits and pieces of this. But when you see quotation marks, you gotta do this. I think the biggest beef I have with this movie is that some actually think it's intelligent. How far we have fallen. Wait, wait. So by that. Some think it's 
ironically intelligent or did he mean to say th some think it's intelligent but it's not because i think that's i don't think that's how you use quotations not so much because no. you use quotations to mean something it so people don't think that i don't think that's right anyways continue is it funny there are a couple of funny bits but otherwise it's actually quite lame in scripting and I like this part. is it blasphemous not really <laughs> it's, not really it's too puerile in its pretensions to be blasphemous okay let's to the gentleman who just used the words puerile in its intentions to be pretentious. Bro? Brother, because this is a man. This is a man who wrote this. Like, guys, brother, you wrote puerile in a review about a Kevin Smith movie. You're pretentious. Dogma. That's limps, not really its name. If that is its real name. Limps because it's just stupid and shows a non-understanding of the subject matter. Kevin Smith is Catholic. He literally understands Catholicism mm. real well. Although, admittedly, this movie did get him excommunicated from the Catholic Church. My mom got excommunicated by the Catholic Church because she refused to give a JFK letter to her priest, so her dad threw him through a, uh, through a door. True story. My grandpa was a very nice Irish man who had a shillelagh. The first movie that I chose is a comic book movie, if you can even call it that. I'm talking about the fabulous piece of art called... The Dark Knight. Oh, I love The Dark Knight. But not everybody agrees with us. Those people like Jared Leto! Or Jack Nicholson, or they're trying to be edgelords. This review is called HBO is Money Wasted. What? Another bogus HBO movie advertised as having closed captioning when it does not. I that I don't think that's an HBO movie. No. I'm pretty sure that's a Warner Brothers movie. I'm I had to add that because this person actually had two people found this helpful. I can't even find the words. There are for books this. and movies I sometimes watch about um, like pandemics where the world ends, and I'm like, oh, that'd be really scary. And then I see something like that, and I'm like, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if humanity just gave up. It's it's not the person that posted that review. It's the people that found it helpful. Just you know, maybe maybe we had our shot, like humanity, and maybe it's time to uh, let the dogs take over. Let the dogs take over, or the cats. I don't know. This review is called formulaic, overhyped, boring. I wonder what his stance. I mean, is. he really got to the point. I'm pretty proud of him. Formulaic, overhyped, boring. Boring, formulaic, overhyped. Boring. Get the point? <laughs> I I actually like this guy. I mean, wow. I, I, He's made a point. I, I like this guy, Good actually. Him. Good for him. How is this movie rated so high? Not my cup of tea at all. When you can predict what is going to happen before it happens, why bother? Well, then why watch any comic book movie? Well, let's spill some tea on here. Not your cup of tea? Let's spill some tea on this movie, my friend. Um, I actually like that review. Even though I disagree with it, I, I, I enjoyed it, but uh, Brooke said it best. It's not even just comic book movies. So many movies are paint by numbers. If that's gonna be the case, then why watch movies? I'm just saying like, who watched Infinity War thinking any of those people that have sequels that were gonna die? Like, you know Spider-Man's gonna come back. Still watched it. So the last movie I'm going to be bringing to the table today is The Shape of Water. Never seen it. You've never I've seen this. Never, I I've never seen Get Out it. either. I kind of missed all the Oscar movies last year. I was busy having a baby. Fair enough. I, I have seen this movie. I've seen it twice. And I definitely agree five stars with this movie. I thought it was amazing. I thought that it had so much symbolism. The script was fantastic. The directing was amazing. But not everybody agrees with me. And this person definitely was out there. This one is called, entitled Hollywood Sleeping with the Fish, Literally. Oh, that's clever. Good for you. Good for you, reviewer. Wait till you read the uh, subject matter that here. That sounds very mm. clever. The reason this got an Oscar has to do with the Ill Illuminati of Hollywood. The new idea to sleep with fish or people in fish costumes and torture one another. Very popular with celebs thus far, and it wins the Oscar. Hashtag one fish, two fish, sex with fish Hollywood. What is up with all the Dr. Seuss reviews? Like, I feel like that's weird. Also, that was a weird review. I haven't seen the movie, but I, I didn't quite... I'm not gonna say I'm a, I have the pulse of Hollywood sexual proclivities, but I don't remember like many fish people being sexy. Well, the creature from the Black Lagoon was pretty hot. Okay. Sure. The this Illuminati. review is called Not Even God Can Save Us From This Awful Movie. Why? Why? Biggest mistake of my life was watching this movie. Like the biggest mistake of your life? Like that's a great life. King. Yeah. If 
the worst thing that's ever happened to you is you watch this movie, like, congratulations, you probably have the greatest life ever. I'm gonna let you read this one. No? No, I'm good. Robbie, you read that. That's for you to read. This review is called, You Never See the Fish's Dick. I'm gonna read this one <laughs> in its entirety. Oh my gosh. I wish I could give this thing zero stars. You don't see the fish's dick. Not once. How is such a thing possible? Let's make Jurassic Park, but not show the dinosaurs. Let's make I Alien. Were, wait, wait, I thought they were saying not show the dinosaur dick, and I'm like, did I miss the unrated version of Jurassic Park? Well, since they're all women. Well, it is weird that you never see the dinosaurs' assholes, but they have sweeping shots of the dinosaurs' butts. Not a single asshole. Well, maybe they're genetically engineered not to poop. Well, that's just a flaw in the genetic engineering right there. Let's make aliens, but with no xenomorphs. I think that's a legitimate comparison. But you only see the xenomorph, like, slightly. How about Titanic with zero boat? Well, that wouldn't be a story. That would just be the notebook. I'm pretty sure that this guy is equating the fish dick to the Titanic boat. Pretty sure this guy's trolling us. This is a movie about a lady having sex with a fish. Okay. Parentheses. I don't think that's what that is. Who has a fish penis? Sure. And the fact that you never get to lay eyes upon his aquatic Why member. Why do you want to see the fish dick? Like... The fact that you never get to lay eyes upon his aquatic member is an embarrassment to everyone involved. Does this guy know the internet exists? Like, I know it's there. There's, there's a thing, it's called the internet. Just type in fish dick and just see what happens. Would love to say I'm fish not mad, dicks. I'm just disappointed, but I'm definitely both. Best picture my ass. Anyone who says they liked this pile needs to take a look in the mirror and tell themselves they deserve better this person than a has... movie about a woman who has sex with a fish where you can never see the, see the fish's dick. This person has not gotten laid, just in general. Or they're really trolling, or they're really weird. Hey, no kink shame, man. Like We you... don't kink shame here, but... There's a few kinks that I'm like... Damn, oh. dude. How about mystery? Let's leave a little bit to mystery. That aquatic dick can be... It can look like whatever you want it to look like. Or, you know, it could just look like a penis, which... They're not that great. They do good things, but, like, they all kind of look like fleshy worms. Like, who cares? Hmm. I mean, they're fine. They're good. They do good work, but... I'm really upset for that guy. Like, I'm sad that... I like that Between guy. Between that I think guy he's funky. and the person who's the worst thing that ever happened in their life is watching The Shape of Water. Like, people have... People have great lives because their problems are magnificent. The, the, thing, the thing is, about Shape of the Water one star reviews, almost all of them had to do with the fact that she bangs a fish dude. What? That, that is bother that people? is Who really can... the one star review thesis. There's like an entire shop like subgenre of porn about that. Like who is it only okay when it's the girl banging or the the monster bang? You're all weird. And this last movie is an honorable mention. It is not really on either our, of our lists of No, this is for your friend. You can shout out Spike. Hi, Spike. This is a movie that has uh, I've never seen this. I've captured seen... the heart and attention of a dear friend of mine, Mr. Creepypasta. As I was having dinner with him in Texas a few weeks ago, he went don't on and on. Tell people that. People, and on and on. No, but people don't need to know that, that Mr. Creepypasta eats food or ever goes to Texas. For all they know, he lives in a hell dimension. I mean, hell, you know, a hell dimension. Did you eat? Did you? And on and on. <laughs> Mr. Creepypasta lives in a hell dimension. He doesn't. He's never been to Texas. Or has he? Maybe Texas is a hell dimension. I'm from Texas, so. Speaking of hell dimensions, Maybe. this movie that we're going to be discussing, one of his loves in film. The Emoji Movie. Oh my god. He's actually... This is the man who reads our creepy pastas. He actually dared me to watch this movie it's and try good. to my give it another it. chance. My son loves it. He's two, though. So if I can see a here. fraction of what he sees in this movie, I will do a sinful analysis on it, but he has to help me. Flat out. I need to get drunk This is to the man this. we trust with our creepy pastas. The Emoji Movie, he loves it. He respects it. He wants me to re-watch it. But not everyone agrees with him. <laughs> No one agrees with him. <laughs> this one-star review is entitled, I Thought I Repressed These Memories. I had a similar thought when I was seeing my therapist. I could actually feel my brain cells dying. I hope to repress this along with other traumatic childhood memories. Probably the molestation. 
Clearly written by a stranger to emoji and teen culture. The cliche was suffocating. If you want to cause yourself physical pain, I strongly recommend. It's Causing... Weird. Weird. Causes lasting trauma and psychological damage. I mean, bro, it's a movie. Calm the fuck down. It sent me into a depressive spiral. Okay, that's... You... This is a movie! Calm down! The character's disturbing dependence on technology to the point... They're fucking emoji! Of course they're dependent on, like... I don't even care about this movie, but bro, like, get some help! It's a movie! You can turn it off! It's okay! Where the malfunction of such resulted in the deterioration of their social life was depressing. I know he knows now. This is a cartoon, right? Like these aren't real people. It'll be okay. I know now my crush won't go out with me unless I buy the iPhone X. I mean, that last part is true. So those were the one-star reviews of movies that we like, and also that Mr. Creepy Pasta likes. Again, guys, we're just we're not really making fun of anybody. We're just meant no. to be funny. I honestly don't care if people don't like Shaun of the Dead. I'm not Edgar Wright or Simon Penn, so I mean, it doesn't. No skin off my back. So that's gonna take us out of it, guys. What are some movies that you love and have you ever looked at the one-star reviews of them? Don't do I don't recommend it, it's painful. It okay. hurt me here and here. It didn't do either of those things to me because my self-worth doesn't, you know, my enjoyment of other movies don't, doesn't. Tie directly to your personality? To other people's opinions. Well, we're not the same person. <laughs> like I'm gonna like a movie or not. So let us know what you guys think. Let you know. Let us know what you think of the movies that we decided to choose. Do we have good taste, or are we one-star reviews in our taste of movies themselves? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable being a one-star review person. As am I. But let us know down in the comments what you guys think. Don't forget to like this video. Share it around if you've enjoyed your time here send with us. Send it to your friends. Make Absolutely. it basically the ring of like film film to and just send yes. it to your friends. Because if you don't, just pretend like in seven days you're gonna die unless you send it to people, and then send it to people. That's not really gonna happen. Please don't, please don't come after us, FBI. Mm -mm. I have, mm -mm. I don't have that kind of power. Mm -mm. Trust me. And also, do not forget to hit that subscribe button down there. Um, as far as tags go, should we be tagging people at the end of these? Mm, I don't know. I'm gonna tag Connor from Play Content, don't and I want him to do an episode of this because Connor's awesome, and he's from Wales, and that accent just gets me. Oh wait! It just gets me. Before we stop, a few people asked me about my novel that I mentioned last. Like, oh yeah, video. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not out, you can't find it anywhere. I'm editing it and I'm looking for someone to do the cover and stuff like that and then I'm gonna self-publish it because publishers don't wanna publish it because it's not, you know, it's it's a very special book. It, it's different, but actually, and no, I'm not just saying this like because it. I've had a lot of people read uh, it. It's awesome. Like I had it up on websites before, just kind of like getting feedback before I knew it was ready. And a lot of people loved it and are very upset they can't read it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but I am going to put it up at some point, hopefully the next year, uh, once I get a cover I like, and once I get it fully edited and into where it's perfect, well, not perfect, but as perfect as it can be, um, it will be up and I'll let you know. And you can buy a copy and uh, read it and love it and some of our patrons will be able to get early access to that as well at our Patreon. Like Patreon.com slash NerdyNomicon. Yay! So if you're looking for incentive, there you go. Also, if you're a patron, like a $1 patron, well, if we get enough $1 patrons, maybe we'll put up a video of our baby dancing because he's so cute. That's possible. We won't really do that, that's terrible, but he is cute. He, and he does dance. He is really cute. But that's going to take us out of it, guys. Again, comment, like, subscribe. See you next week. I am not a fish person. I thought you were going to say I'm not a camel. Of... Zombie Cthulhu! <laughs> Why? Why did that happen? I just want to wait for